All right, welcome to another edition of Beyond the Paint. I'm Katie Christensen, and I have the pleasure of being here with De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis, and we're just gonna jump right into it. First of all, you guys have not played very much together. You're brand new to Sacramento, so before we get into the basketball stuff, I was talking to, to Domas. He's been to like one restaurant here. So you've gotta help him out. You've gotta give him the, the spots, your favorite spots in Sacramento. Uh, all right, so obviously, fixings. I'm, I'm from the south, so yeah. soul food is great. Uh, there is this seafood place. Yeah, I'm very southern. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely find the name, but we probably eat it. If we're here for seven days, we'll probably eat it four times a week. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are you a seafood person? Yes. I know he likes pasta. Obviously, sushi is a big yeah. one. Uh, you've got to you've got to try Makunis. I know yeah, you. I was you gonna say, I yeah, that's he was at the game yesterday. Yeah, Taro. In Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, he's he's usually. You'll see him a lot. You and you'll see him because he stands out. He's his hair is always a different color. Either blue, purple, green. Okay. And yeah. usually the the suit matches the yeah. the hair color. The Tesla though. matches the hair too. So <laughs> if you see that, it's, it's probably him too. Okay, so for you, what has been kind of the biggest change coming from Indiana to Sacramento? The weather. The weather. <laughs> <laughs> the weather. It's great. Um, sunny every day. Are you a golfer? Uh, no, not, not, not a golfer. I wonder if that's going to happen. Have you gotten... Yeah. We've, we've taken lessons. Okay. I'm I want to. I want to start golfing. Same. That's the best <laughs> thing about being in, in Sacramento. I remember when Garrett Temple was here and he was like, oh my gosh, I can go golfing every single day. So there's some positives. Yeah. Definitely weather. My, my vets, my first year, everywhere we went, they brought their golf clubs. Mm -hmm. Him, oh, wow. uh, George Hill, oh, yeah. Vince mm -hmm. Carter, they all yeah. brought their golf well, clubs. Well, Vince was already uh, edging towards retirement, oh, yeah. so he had to get his golf mm -hmm. game on he's, point. He's no yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, random question. Uh, I know everyone is it texts now. It's, it's more conversations. I'm an emoji user. Um, what is your most common used emoji? Um, probably the flex emoji. The flex <laughs> emoji. Yeah. Oh! So, uh, honey, I need you to bring me home some milk and you send back the flex uh, emoji. Not, <laughs> not like that, but like if I ever have to post it on Instagram, everyone makes fun of me because I just do the, the flex, flex emoji. emoji. And you? Uh, mine is, um, it used to be the one like this one, uh -huh. but now it's gone to the, uh, I guess it's like the Sherlock Holmes one with the, uh, oh, with, with, the, the uh, with the magnifying glass. Yeah, I do that so one a lot. I use the, the teeth one where it's like all the teeth yeah. are showing, yeah. but the problem is, is that every time I type it, I do it with my face. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, <laughs> I don't know what the emoji thing is. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that I'm the random one that's like, you know that that is actually what my face is doing when I send it. Um, so I have, to, I have to confess, when we were in Indiana, you were wearing a sweater on the sideline pair of slacks and a sweater and I was oh, like oh, yeah. that looked like Doc Dr. Huxtable to me. I don't even know who that is. Oh my gosh. The Cosby show? You don't know who Dr. Huxtable I mean, I watched is? The <laughs> I, I watched I the either. Cosby show. Oh my like, gosh. <laughs> this is when you know how old you are. <laughs> well but like I've watched Family Matters. I couldn't tell you everybody's right. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so your job after this, after this interview is to look up Doc Dr. Huxtable. Dr. He always Huxtable. had on all like the sweaters, right? Like he ever, it was, it was a big style statement. So I've got to ask you about your style choices. I've seen you since your rookie year. Your, your style has evolved. It's definitely Is evolved. there any, any ones you look back on and you're like, oh, what was I thinking? Oh, uh, no. Cause I've never wear anything that's like super out there anyways. <laughs> like it's, it's definitely changed, but I think I'm still very subtle. Subtle. You, Except for my watches, my watches. Your wa well, and those I've are the pieces. I become a watch collector. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely become a watch collector. What's your What's your favorite? Uh, I have a I actually wore it yesterday. I have a um, it's an all rose gold Rolex. Oh, rose gold. Yeah, yeah. That's how many watches would you say are in your collection? I have like six now, but like everything is. I've like got very more than timeless. six, but I can guarantee you that my watches do not cost as much <laughs> as your watches. <laughs> now, everything is is pretty timeless pieces. Mm -hmm. I, I would say. Good, you're gonna have them forever. Yeah, I'll, pass I them think on I want to, to pass your them son. Yep, yeah, pass them down. Um, you were uh, sitting on the bench, um, one of our last home games, and I didn't even recognize that you were on the bench. You were wearing a black baseball cap. Yeah. So how would you <laughs> describe your your style uh, just, away from the team? It's just simple, clean, simple, clean, clean, nothing out there. You know, well, just, we've got to point this out. Yeah. De'Aaron was a little bit <laughs> jealous, I was of, jealous of how did you get the DS on your sweatsuit and um, apparently you have some connections 
uh, I extended with Nike and they took care of me. You gotta be an all-star. <laughs> you have to be an all-star for that. So there's a lot of incentive to be an all-star. It also extends to your, your wardrobe. You know, what's funny too, he, when he came, uh, I was looking at the Kobe's in his locker. Yeah. All the different colors, right? I'm yeah. like, oh, I never had those. Right, right. 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 Where did you get those? All-star. Straight. Happened after the first All-star. (laughs) (laughs) Everything happened after the first All-star. Straight from the factory. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I can I can imagine that now that you're seeing what the benefits are, aside from you know like paychecks and and things like that, (laughs) (laughs) the little star next to your name on the online and all that. So you guys, when you, you first got paired up after the trade deadline, the nickname Fox and the Ox. I apologize for that. <laughs> yeah, what was that? Like, uh, explain this. Why do you need to apologize? Well, so I said it in an interview, right? I was uh-huh. like, I said he's like an ox, like how uh-huh. strong he is. Oh, yeah. And then it blew up. And boom, it was, it was gone. Yeah, people T-shirts, attached to these. T-shirts, free game, everything. It was and and where that. do we stand on it now that the season is over? Is this something that we've grown to love I don't or mind. I, don't mind. I mean whatever the fans want to <laughs> yeah want to like I'm not it's, fun. it's more fun for them so Rese bought yeah. like three shirts oh yeah. so you got a collection of fox in the Ox. Their, their shirt? <laughs> fox the i need some of those shirts <laughs> so you need to to mix that into your into your wardrobe i definitely might wear like a little hoodie every so so maybe here's the solution um, when when you get married in August no. and it's a big day, no, 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 underneath no, no. Uh-uh. your <laughs> that's not gonna underneath happen. your tux, and that can be the big reveal. That's not gonna happen. No, that's not gonna no, happen. No, 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 no. <laughs> Harry would probably do something like that, <laughs> but no, 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 not not I. Well, so this is interesting. Um, you are already a dad. You are a new dad. I'm gonna ask flip flop questions. You're married. He's about to get married. As a as a dad, what advice do you have? Uh, well, definitely it's very different situations, uh, but I mean, I just think that you're going to enjoy it once they can start Do walking. Do you remember the baby the phase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, definitely. That's the hardest phase in the it's, beginning, It's right? not fun until they start walking. And then with the walking comes, start trying to get some words out. That's definitely the best part. And advice for De'Aaron, who is about to, to be a married man. What is the best advice you can give him? He probably already knows, but um, she's always right. (laughs) 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 So my advice for you guys is communication is always the best, right? Well, I will say we've been living together for uh, maybe a little over two years. Mm -hmm. So we always hear that once you get married, it's different. We're like, I feel like we kind of treat like a married couple anyways already. So hopefully nothing changes. Yeah, well. You just wait and see. Life, <laughs> life, life is about change constantly, and it's about how you change with it. Um, speaking of change, I mean, you guys five and six years in the league. Um, where would you assess yourself now, De'Aaron, five years in, wrapping up that season? Um, I mean, I definitely think I'm a much better player than, you know, when I came in, but, I mean, I don't know where I would attribute the exact change to be. I think just the, the understanding of the game uh, for me is is what continues to evolve, I think. I saw a shift in you this year. You know, there was rules changes at the beginning of the year in terms of how fouls were going to be called and all that. And there was questions about how it was going to affect different players and specifically like three-point shooters. But I saw a difference in the beginning of the year of like you trying to figure out how to get the respect of the officials when you go into the lane. But then as the season went along, it seemed to me like you had figured it out. Was there a moment where it was like, okay, I I know how to get mine? Oh, no. I just think we were sending in clips of me getting hacked. (laughs) And refs were like, well, we probably can't let this go on much longer. Because we had Don and Shelly who were were in helping us. And we, we have a lot more clips to send in. Of like blatant, just blatant fouls, like because I've never been one to try to manipulate the game. Um, you know, they'll be like, they'll tell me, you know, you should go into the defender here and there, and I'm like, well, I'm going to the basket. I'm just trying to score. And I'm trying to put the ball in the basket. I'm not necessarily worried about getting fouled. And yeah. So it's, it's been an of, it's been an evolution, definitely. and it's crazy that you know, you, when I was playing, you didn't have these assets of like former officials teaching you how to like 
you know, work the game. But for you, I mean, you've had a little bit different path. De'Aaron has been in the same, with the same team for the entire time and, and you've had some changes and now you're here in Sacramento. And how do you kind of look at this last year as a whole, starting in Indiana and then the change when it came here to Sacramento? Um, it's definitely been an experience, you know, getting traded midway through the season is just as crazy as everyone <laughs> has told me it, it would be, you know, uh, living in a hotel, new coach, new, new teammates, everything. But since I got here, everyone opened me with, uh, uh, welcomed me with open arms and it's just been uh, really easy. It's been a really easy transition, it seems like. And for the, for the two of you guys playing together, I mean, it's a small sample size. Well, I think it's like nine games, right? Oh, um, nine games. It was just nine games wow. because <laughs> wow. somebody got suspended yeah. <laughs> and then somebody yeah. got hurt. Yeah. Somebody had a baby. There yeah. was all these life yeah. things that, that factored into it yeah. as well. But, you know, this is the first time that you've ever played with a big that has this particular skill set and, and particularly the passing. How much did you see when you came here that you're like, okay, this is how I can make it easier for everyone around me, but specifically De'Aaron? Um, he has a lot on his shoulders all game. He's scoring, driving, getting everyone involved. And sometimes it's nice if you can get him some easy looks, you know, get him easy looks, get him going. He feels good, you know, gets teammates involved. So that's what I try to do always. And playing with him, what, what was the first thought after the first game? Wow, he gets me open. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he gets me open. You don't and, have to work as hard. And, I, and yeah. I told you guys before, like, I've been hit by those screens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not... Underrated skill that not a lot of people can yeah. pick very out. Very underrated but. skill. Uh, getting hit by those screens all, all game will... It'll make you think once or twice about trying to go over some screens. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, outside of that, just like we talked about, the way, the way he passes the ball, it, it's... I don't know, like, it's, it's hard to describe because... Like he's making passes that, you know, a lot of guards can't make. He's making passes out of the post that people can't make and, and backdoor cuts. And um, it's something that's definitely been a process for me because I've never, like you said, I've never played with anybody like that. Um, and I definitely think it, it started to get better. And I think um, the better I shoot the ball definitely opens up, you know, not only us, but everybody else on the team. Um, and it's, it's definitely going to be a work in progress. You know, whoever our coach is uh, next season, I definitely, you know, think um, – one, he has a lot to work with. He has, you know, skilled players to work with, and I think we hit the ground running. So you, you bring up the coaching situation. Obviously, this is the day after the season has ended, and you guys have done exit interviews now, and there's, you know, been an announcement that there's going to be a change in the coaching staff. Um, how do you guys look at this process? You've been through it a lot here, and this is something that is new for you here specifically, but now that you have like, a better idea of the core of this group, what is ideal? Um, for me personally, I think um, I've always just wanted structure, like kind of knowing, you know, game in, game out, day in, day out, you know exactly what you're going to do. Everybody knows their role. Um, I think that's a big thing for me. And, you know, people always ask me how has it, you know, kind of not having that. And at the end of the day, I'm a hooper. I'm a basketball player. I've, I can go play to the park. I can go to any type of open gym. And I think I could pretty much play anywhere. So. Um, that's kind of how I've had to look at it um, with what we've had. But So you feel like you thrive it within structure? Yeah, definitely. And I think just because I've always been fast and athletic, people think that I don't want that. But that's, as far as in my head, that's not how I've, you know, I've never thought like that. Right. I've always been a person that's, that's wanted structure. Like a system structure guy. And, and you, ideally, uh, when you look at, at a coach, what, what is the ideal situation for you? Uh, I agree with Fox. Um, structure is the number one thing. Every player knowing their role, nobody doing too much, nobody doing too, uh, mm -hmm. too little. Uh, that's, that's what makes a winning team. You know, people know exactly what they have to do and mm -hmm. not trying to be anything extra. And the main goal is to win the game at the, at, at the end of the day. So the happy medium for you guys is kind of some freedom to utilize skills, but also structure so that you guys feel secure in like a system. Mm -hmm. That's. I think that's that's how most yeah. that's how most team winning teams are, are, are built. Yeah. You have your, you know, three guy, two three guys, and then everything else is kind of built, you know, around them, and everybody knows exactly what they need to do. Six new pieces, 
on a team at an all-star break, like after the all-star at the trade deadline. I mean, that is monumental. I don't think that that happens very often. Uh, Alvin had said in all his, you know, three plus decades that he had never experienced that. And you know, there's gonna be more changes as well to the roster in the off season. When you guys look at the core group right now, what do you feel is, is missing and pieces that are necessary to be able to continue, but also to, to put around you guys to utilize your guys' skills? Um, I mean, in the, in the league now, it's length and shooting is, is at a premium. So um, I think that's, that's pretty much what you, that's what you try to do. I feel like the group of guys we have are great. You know, everyone has that fire, wants to win, wants to make a change. Um, what was missing was like a training camp and practice. I yes, feel like yeah. we needed that time to really get to know each other and learn the defensive schemes, the offensive yeah. sets. So I feel like that was the, the biggest issue where doing a trade during the deadline, you don't get that. So you just got to live I with it. I feel like in the league now, we talk so much about offense and scoring and you look at teams like Golden State and what they've done and, you know, like even Boston and the way they've scored and you can go down the list. I mean, Miami, you know, uh, Milwaukee, but there's one thing that all of these top teams that are consistently in the race have in common and it's defense. But for whatever reason, we don't really talk a lot about how they are as a team, such a good defensive unit. Um, how important is that for you guys and kind of, you know, in the forefront of your, your thought process? That, that's big and, and it's funny because um, truthfully from like the worst team to a team that's in the top 10, the difference is, you know, five, six, seven points a game. You know, it's three, four possessions. Um, so for us, it's really just trying to find a way to get those extra three to four stops in a game. And we talked about like, every time I think we've given up an offensive rebound, something bad happens. Yeah. Like something, like a three goes down and one, something bad happens. So it's just those types of things that truthfully turn to an entire defense around. Like it's not 12 points, that's, that's extreme. But it's those extra three, four possessions, those extra three, four stops that you can get in a game that, that truthfully really, that really turns the team around. As a big, defensively, kind of being the back and, and kind of sitting back and kind of instructing everyone, how comfortable are you vocally, um, especially just kind of joining a team to be able to kind of be the, the leader of that, that defensive pack? I think uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty comfortable uh, since I got here speaking out. Um, it's not really my suit to talk. Mm -hmm. um, you seem very soft-spoken. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, like off the court or like team stuff. I'm not more a vocal guy. I'm more on the court. Mm -hmm. But once I get on the court on defense, I'll talk. I'll, you know, call guys out, you know, figure out what we got to do. But off the court, that's more Fox's job. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be like, bring it in, guys. We need to win. Hustle. Right. But on the court, I feel like uh, I just set by example. I'll say you definitely hear him. You yeah. Definitely, you definitely well, hear him. That, I, I mean, I, I hear you as well on the floor, but then, you know, being around you off the, off the floor, it's like, okay, there's, there's a juxtaposition between who you are as an individual and then the player that you have to be. But I think that that's kind of an evolution in the game anyway. I mean, one of the biggest changes I saw in you after the trade deadline, I don't think I'd ever seen you be so vocal on the floor. Is that something for you that is a, a conscientious effort to be like, not, everyone says, be a leader, be a leader but some people are naturally vocal leaders and some lead by example. Is that something that for you has been like a conscientious like thought to be like, I have to become more comfortable being that vocal? Uh, yeah, definitely because um, like you said, people have always kind of known me not to you know, say a lot, but when I spoke, people listened. Uh, so for me, it was always, for me now, it's um, just do it more, you know? Um, and I think that's that's a huge thing of, of that's a huge way that people control the game. Like you see Draymond and, and CP, they, they're talking the entire game. And when they have a good game, like you feel it, you know, you when Chris Paul has a good game, you you literally see and you feel that he controlled the entire pace of the game every second that he's out there. And um, that's something that, you know, I'm trying to, uh, to learn how to do and, and do it more. You've played with a lot of different people um, here in Sacramento in your five years. Is there someone that was kind of a mentor to you in that process of kind of the leadership, the vocal part? Um, I mean, I would definitely say I saw it a lot in like Garrett and, and George when mm -hmm. uh, in my first year, um, and then Shump. Shump, was yeah, a big yeah, one. that's that's a huge one. Yeah. Um, 
I think I would say those three guys are definitely, you know, um, some of the guys that I definitely learned a lot of that from, especially Shunk. He, especially he was uh, so valuable and so spectacular in a way that I don't think a lot of people got to see. Like even just sitting down like this in a setting like this, I think he and I sat and did an interview for like an hour and a half. And like he just, he's that person on and off the floor. But you know, now that the season has, has wrapped up and you, you take some time, you look ahead to the next year, how important do you think it's gonna be for you guys to like get together in the off season? And what are your plans in terms of, you know, workouts and, and d continuing to kind of develop your guys' you know, rapport with one another? Oh, well, I mean, half the league's in L.A. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, we've talked about it. I'm right. like, I'll make my way up to L.A. And um, as a team, we, we've talked about, you know, trying to get workouts in together um, because I think we had a lot of different guys playing well at the end of, I would say, respective seasons. Like, I felt like I was playing well. Domas was playing well. Davion was playing well. Um, Dame was playing well. Um, so just trying to be able to get together, work out together, um, and then be able to hit the ground running with, you know, hopefully everybody playing, you know, to the best of their ability. When you look at Davion, I mean, you saw him for a short period of time and you got to see the, the entire evolution of his, of his rookie year. Um, how would you kind of categorize what you saw the, the last part of the season um, in terms of his development and the constant narrative that we've had here the last couple years about can, you know, another guard play alongside De'Aaron? Like, what are your thoughts on what you saw and how that works? I mean, I definitely think he's developed into a good NBA player. I mean, truthfully, he had a natural rookie year, you know, where you struggle at the beginning um, and then you progressively get better and then you're playing your best basketball at the end of the year. Um, I think that's what happens with, with most rookies. Um, but for us, it's just continuing to grow as players. Uh, I think shooting is always, you know, the biggest factor in playing with anybody, truthfully. Um, and obviously with his work ethic and, um, you know, how much he's in the gym, uh, I think that, I don't think that that'll be a problem. And for me, it's just continue to try to replicate what I was doing, you know, before I went down um, as far as shooting the ball. And what advice would you give Davion going into the off season? He's notorious for his work ethic. Um, but you know, you've, you've been in the league now for several years and you've, you know, how important is not only just the, the skill development, but also the recovery and rest yeah, for your body. I'm, I'm worried about him. <laughs> <laughs> he might burn himself out before we even start. So um, we got to make sure he gets his vacation time and relaxes. Cause that's, that's also to be, to be honest, if, if you can't play, that's, if you're not healthy, then who cares if you're working out every day? Youth can so, only take you so exactly, far, right? So exactly. Yeah. So you got to sit down yeah. a little bit. Like your legs are thank you. So yeah. he, sta he stayed behind in Phoenix, mm -hmm. and he's working out today <laughs> with yeah. someone at GCU. I mean, it's funny because I asked him, I was like, yo, how long are you going to take off? He was like, you know, I'll probably get a weekend. And then back to, I'm like, yo, all right. Yeah, who is his, who, I mean, who is his, uh, his vet? Do you guys assign it? Like we always had like one person as a rookie that was kind of your, you well, know. Truthfully, it was probably Dante when he got here. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, him and Dante. I yeah, they they very yeah. quickly <laughs> developed a, an almost adorable rapport with each other. <laughs> yeah. I mean, isn't it kind of cute watching the two of yeah, them uh, together? Yeah, I mean, we obviously Rico, yeah. you know, mentors him a lot, and we definitely tell him like every once in a while, you do you gotta get off your feet. You definitely yeah. got. You start seeing shots become short. And you're like, well, I'm working on my shot. It's like, yeah, because you're, you're tired. You don't know you're tired, but yeah. you're tired. Yeah. Heading into kind of next season, um, what are you looking forward to the most? And what is the one thing that there's like the question mark there? Like, you, this is a big question that I want to know. That's my, the thing I'm most curious about. Um, I mean, what we can do with a full season together, yeah. truthfully. Um, I think, like you said, it was only nine games. I didn't even... I didn't notice that it was only nine games, but mm -hmm. yeah, just what can we do with the with the full off season, uh, training camp, mm -hmm. and um, with all these new with all our new pieces, and you know whatever happens this summer, and you know new guys coming in, what can we do with the with the full season together? Other than having the opportunity to get to Napa and Amador mm -hmm. County and and take in some of the the great things about being in Sacramento, what what are you kind of looking at for next season? Is something that you're really looking forward to? I think the main and thing, you can't use the same answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think the main thing for us is uh, we've had really good seasons in the NBA so far, and the main thing for us is just to show that we can win, mm -hmm. that 
numbers and all that stuff don't matter. You know, um, we, we can show that we're two guys that if you put the right pieces and the right coaching staff and everything, uh, we can get you wins and uh, do something special. Well, so De'Aaron has dealt with this now for five seasons and you've been here for a couple months. Um, how hard is it to deal with kind of the past of this organization and the playoff drought and the narrative surrounding that when like you've been a part of it for now five years and you just got here like you're not fully responsible for the whole thing like how how much of that does that plays into your guys' thought process going into a season i think no matter what team you represent that's always going to come with yeah. it. The past is always going to, they're going to. So do you just kind the of. The present players are always going to be there. Yeah. If anything, it just adds more, more fuel to the, to the motivation, you know, to go out there and uh, do better. So I'm excited. I think it's a great chance. Um, obviously, no one wanted this to happen, but now it's a great chance to finally change this and um, give these fans what they deserve. Yeah, just being a part of that team, that, that breaks the, the curse. That's uh, what you look for. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. definitely, definitely. I mean, um, like Justin and they, they had a, one of the games and obviously the fans go crazy here. Um, and I'm like, well, you should have, my second season, like it was, it was, it was nuts in here. One of the closest that we've, you know, come to making the playoffs. And I'm like, just imagine being that team that, that's able to, to, to break that and what a playoff game would be like, you know, in Golden One. It would, like the city would theoretically speaking, be on fire. Yes. You know, obviously, we don't, we don't want the city on fire. <laughs> but that's what has to get everyone motivated. Yeah. yeah. That's what's going to get yeah. everyone going. Like, the city will be on fire if, 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 if you're able to be that team that, that gets to the playoffs. Well, one thing that I know, having been here now for 15 years, is that this team, the city embraces the team, and they want nothing more than to be a part of, of a special journey. And regardless, they're there for you. So, yes, the moment that it ends, you guys are going to experience it on a whole different level. Um, but good luck with your off season. Congratulations on your wedding, and uh, hopefully Rise is, is managing that, and you don't have to stress on that, and enjoy your sweet baby boy. And maybe by the time we come back here in the fall, I think he'll certainly be crawling around, and you might sure. be very close to chasing him. But you guys enjoy your off season, yeah. and thank you for taking the time to sit down and, and everyone uh, get a peek inside of, of Fox and the Ox. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize again. <laughs>